Hola, bienvenidos a IMHO. In my homosexual opinion. Me llamo Darby. I'm Curtis E. Jackson. The E stands for Encanto, which I haven't seen yet, but I'm going to get to right after I finish watching Mexico Drag Race. Drag Race Mexico. Close. Yeah, you started with one episode and all it takes is one. I'm hooked. And then you kind of get the whole idea. So if you've noticed, Alexis is dead. No, R. she's R. at work, actually, I think. This is my husband, Curtis. For those of you who are like, oh my God, she keeps talking about her husband and like how is this hot guy? and funny he is. He can't possibly exist. Let's see if he, he can so actually perfect. live up to that. Oh I God. don't know. Could I ever even be like him? No, Alexis had to work. So mm. I asked Curtis. Well, actually, Alexis asked Curtis to fill in She for reached her. out. It was very nice. Was, I was that hard Honestly, for you? I was just thrilled to be asked. Then I realized I'd have to do it. So I was less thrilled. Um, but here we are. Thank you for doing this. And it's just remember. Truly my pleasure. You don't have to make jokes. You can just be yourself. Just myself? What's the joke? What? What? She wanted me to do the whole Curtis E. Jackson, the E stands for whatever. But I wanted to introduce myself as Kurt Honey Baby. Well, do that. Hola. Bienvenidos. Thank you so much for being here, babe. And he hasn't been watching this season because he's got so much on his plate. You know, he's yeah. acting and he's disco biscuits and he's just got a lot going yeah. on but you did watch the episode and do you speak spanish um after un poquito. 13 years together is that weird that i'm asking you that probably have no. you been to mexico yes i have been to the, mexico the, the. i've been to cancun which is sort of mexico. like a american college outpost yeah but you so. didn't go in college right you went no, as a I child in with your dad high school with your dad yes why why that because we are party animals no, he wanted what? to teach me a lesson, I think, about, you know, watch everyone and then don't do what they do. Because we saw, I did see a guy passed out on the beach with an empty milk jug that had been filled with beer. And he was passed out, sunburnt, red as a lobster, laying on the beach. And it was like 1.30 in the afternoon. So I saw that and said, I got to get into that. I was going to say, it didn't that looks actually... relaxing. Yeah, it didn't actually do what I think he wanted it to do. Because no. I've seen you in that position multiple times. I'm always no, washing for real. Out the milk Why jug. did you go to Mexico with your dad? Because it was fun. It was spring break. Look, when I was in middle school, high school, whatever, that was peak MTV spring break, mm -hmm. right? Fat Tuesdays was the spot, right? Cisco, the VJs, everyone, it was lit. So I was dying to get down to Cancun. And if I had to bring my dad along with me, so be it. But we also went and saw some like ancient Mayan ruins and a bunch of historical stuff. And the art and the food was great. But really, I was there for the party. That's a high schooler though. Yeah, but I was very advanced. I was very advanced mean? in my partying. I've always been the life of the party. Did your I was dad the class let you drink? clown. We were at a Senor Frogs and I believe I was like pushing my way up to the front where the DJ people were and they were like go-go dancers or whatever on the stage and they were pouring bottles of tequila like into people's mouths and I just kind of like popped up between two college kids and like opened my mouth and I think I got a little taste of tequila. It was disgusting. You but think um, you got a little taste. Well, I don't want to say I'm anything sure. incriminating right. on air. Well, the statute of limitations on underage drinking is, is quite ex extensive. Yeah. Now, your dad is famously, as we all know, I can't stop talking about it, he's not much of a drinker. But when he does, mm. he loves a mic's hard. Well, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. Sorry to interrupt everybody, it's me, Uncle Darvo. Jarring, right? I'm here to talk about the sponsor of today's video, MD Hair. Now listen, most of the time when you see me, I'm wearing a wig. So you don't really think about what's under it. But I think about it a lot. And a few years ago, I started to lose my hair. It's thinning on top and I've got the, what are these, gutters? So I have been looking for a solution for myself and thankfully, MD Hair came along. MD Hair is the world's first medical grade hair growth treatment customized to the exact cause and type of hair loss. So basically what you do is you just go on the website, you take a quiz, you upload a picture of your scalp and a hair growth treatment plan is developed for you and sent to your home. So you might be asking yourself, what's in the kit? Well, a lot. You get a shampoo, a conditioner, a hair care serum, hair wellness supplements, and marine collagen. And it's all customized to you. 
Personally, I love the shampoo and conditioner. I have used some shampoo and conditioners that are supposed to support hair regrowth, but it wasn't customized to me and I've never really found anything that fits. This shampoo and conditioner feels great, it smells great, and most importantly, I know that it's customized for me. Also included in the service is 24 seven dermatologist support. So if you have any questions, you can chat with their dermatologists and get your questions answered right then and there. They're also able to fine tune your medications and your treatment. Now I've only been using this for a couple weeks, so I don't have a before and after for you, but I can tell you at the very least, I feel more confident that I've finally taken the step I need to address this concern that makes me feel a little self-conscious. So now it's your turn to customize your hair growth treatment with MD Hair. All you have to do is use promo code IMHO70 at checkout and get 70% off your first month of customized products. 70%, that's a lot of percent. Thank you MD Hair for sponsoring today's video and getting me started. Who knows, I may be the next Joey J. What if I just give up wigs? Cause I've got too much hair. I was gonna ask you how was your fourth, but LOL, I was there, it was awful. We had quite a family emergency this week. Yeah. We've been going through it, so that's another reason I'm so thankful you're here. I know you've emotionally been through it this week, and the yeah. fact that you really pulled yourself up by your toes, I was gonna say bootstraps, you're, you're barefoot. By my croc uh, sport flap. I don't like the way you, you enunciated that P. JB broke her tooth. Curtis was like, hey, I can move half of JB's tooth. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? So we had to go to an emergency room vet. They had to remove the tooth. It was awful. I mean, well, good news, JB is fine. She was in no pain. Yeah. Apparently it was broken in half and it was on its way down to the root, but it hadn't made it to the root yet. Yes. So she wasn't in any pain. They were like, we gotta get it out now though, cause she will be very soon. So luckily- and How exciting, baby's first tooth loss. I just can't wait to see her adult teeth grow in. You know what's really funny is our vet office is decorated kind of like an old western saloon. It and that's feels, so funny. It it's feels, dumb. There's it no feels reason for it. Like it's something out of like a Disney World, like a section yeah. of Disney World. Like if Disney Land. World Frontier had Land. a Frontierland vet clinic. Yeah. You could stop in. It's, it would be great. It's so funny. But honestly, I, I've driven past it a lot. But now that I've been inside, I get it, yeah. it's a vibe. And it was nice, they offered us sarsaparilla to sip on while we waited for the surgery. <laughs> they did, they did, and we got to cool ourselves in case we had the vapors. Emergency surgery vet bill, hi. So I put on social media that I was open to doing cameos if anybody needed a cameo. So we did get a lot of cameo orders, and then a sweet, sweet, precious, darling, Sovereign Sire on Twitter, or Threads, if you do that now. She reached out and she's like, I had a similar like pet emergency thing. What is your Venmo? Please let me share it. Let people help because pet sickness is emotional. That's the worst. Because they don't know what's going on. It's like when you see a human baby suffering, honestly, it's kind of worse. Yeah. Because human babies, I mean, what are they and bringing? Pets won't tell you what's wrong. Didn't anyway, so then she shared it and then I got a few donations. So we just want to say thank you to everyone who has either bought a cameo or donated. It is so expensive. And I yeah. think with all the donations, we've cut it in half. So oh, yeah. that's... A huge help. Much like her tooth was kind of. Full circle, full circle. I do want to say the names because it, I'm so blown say away. Say their names. Raphael, who loves to make photo montages of each episode, thank you. Donated, thank you. Shauna, thank you so much. Shauna, Tom, thank you. Sovereign Sire, Avi, thank you so much. Burwald, as always, thank you, Burwald. Nicole, I love you. Virgil. Bunbury, Alex, Michael, and Kristen. Those are just the Venmo ones. Thank you so much, everybody. And now all the cameos too, sorry. I have to say the names because you gave money to, let's be honest, strangers. We're strangers so that our dog could feel better. That's so nice. Yeah. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Steven. Thank you, Sergio. Thank you. James Mansfield. Our favorite queen. From All Stars? Yes. Spending that All Stars elimination money. Thank you. Connor, Bryce. Oh, is this your Bryce? No, different Bryce. Brandy with an I. Okay, Brandy, I see you. 
Niall and Jen. Oh, and Jensen. Jen and Jensen. Y'all should talk. Y'all got a lot in common. There's a brand Tyler, Kaylee, Gus. Okay, Gus is such a good name for a cat, right? Yeah, for sure. Madeline. Madeline twice. Madeline, you little bitch. Thank you. I love you. Do you like Gus for a cat? Because it's like you could do Gussy cat, like a pussy cat. Rhiannon. Gussy cat. Okay, I have to be honest with you, Riri. I never quite know how to say your name, and I get so nervous. And every time I see it pop up on Twitter, I go, I'll get there someday. I'm not there yet. But thank you, I love you. So thank you so much, everybody. That was so nice. So everybody, like I... It's the vet coming the to collect the bill. We raised about half the amount that we need to cover the bill. I'm sorry. I raised about half what we need. Thank you so much, IMHO family. And Curtis, I raised... Your turn. I raised a cold glass of sarsaparilla to my lips. For real, what are you doing? JB is doing well. Yeah. She takes her medicine and she's kind of still. She's vibing. Last night she ended up crawling. She's a big dog. She's like 50 pounds. She ended up crawling on the back of the couch like a cat. Mm -hmm. And then she fell off. I mean, she fell off onto the couch. So we're going to but... need to raise more money now because she <laughs> yeah. broke several bones. Well, not just for that. We also need to buy a shorter couch. Short couch king. Yes. Where so are you, my short couch you, king? Thank you, everyone. Should we get into this episode? Yeah. We are on episode three of Drag Race Mexico. Trace. Now we say goodbye to Miss Vallarta. She was the first eliminated. So sad. My favorite thing about her elimination, though, I must say, is the fact that when they come back into the workroom, there's the message on the mirror, right? Mm -hmm. Well, this workroom is set up with tiny little mirrors in a row. So it looked like she had written on like a post it. I'm leaving. <laughs> Adios. I love that. Yeah. If that were me, I would write one letter on each mirror until I had spelled out, fuck you. Eventually, they're going to get the mirror so small, it's like just all compacts. Yeah. Set up on the counter. Mirrors are expensive. You think, well, how expensive could glass be? <laughs> That's why those mirror balls in RuPaul's disco dining room, what is it? That's why that room is so classy, because mirrors are expensive. When you have that many mirror His balls... His dad sent us an architectural <gasps> digest so we money. could we could see RuPaul's mirror balls. Thank you, Jerry. First, they have to do a mini challenge. And this mini challenge is simply a taco eating contest. Wish I could have done it myself. So great. Listen, we don't need frills. We don't need you to do anything special. You don't have to shoot me with a water cannon. Just eat some tacos. I love that shit. I do wish we had the smell o vision though, because I was pretty hungry. I gotta be honest, you always smell a little bit like beef. Yeah. Just kind of your vibe. The patented drag queen musk mixing with the El Pastor. Oh. The patented drag queen musk? Isn't that a thing? No! What do I smell like? What? Well, I mean, not you. Do you, you. think drag queens smell? Not you. You think we have musk? Isn't there, like, something about the tights? Nobody washes their tights? Well, yeah, but that's just body odor. Don't say drag queen musk. <laughs> <laughs> You're just saying stinky slut. You call us stinky sluts. Well, for some people, that's oh, a turn on. Oh, God. Have you ever done an, an eating contest? Um... Nothing like officially sanctioned by anyone, <laughs> but um, I've definitely <laughs> pushed myself officially. to the limits. Okay, there we go. You are a very good eater, I have to say. We I'm balance each other out. I'm a very good eater. I'm a very bad eater. You're a very good eater. My doctor thinks I'm a bad eater because my cholesterol your levels are... Your heart's about to explode. Are... But that's not you. That's your family. That's the food. It's your family's fault. No, no, uh... It's all that tasty food. It's no, that's fault. not true. You're the healthier of both of us. And we went to get our physicals. I got my results back first. And they were like, your cholesterol's a little high. And I was like, oh man, Curtis is going to be great. And then his was so bad, the doctor was like, give me a call when you get a chance. <laughs> and yeah. I, you'll be on pills, I'll be fine. Yeah. But oh man, I did feel like I won that. I thought that we could, could come to LA, all I would have to do is get a tan. Well, I don't know that tans have ever been health But that's positive. the whole like, oh, California, you look so tan and healthy. We did get a comment recently on one of our videos. That was like, Alexis and Darby, you moved to LA. Why do you look paler now than you did in Chicago? <laughs> because we're not dumb. Just because we moved to LA doesn't mean that like our skin tans. We still get skin cancer. If we do not prick, do we not laugh? I have umbrellas, baby. I sit under an umbrella. <laughs> Curtis yeah. will literally, he goes, he takes his shirt off, which I really do. Thank you for doing that. He takes his shirt off and he does his tan. And then I sit off to the side under an umbrella near the awning of the roof, just in case I need the shade to touch. Yeah. And I sit there like a little gremlin and I go, mm, must be nice. 
We've got umbrella money, baby. Well, forget <laughs> mirror money. We got well, umbrella money. Didn't we just talk about needing help paying for JB and suddenly we have umbrella money? But we can't That's pay why the we can't with umbrellas. Pay. That's why we can't pay for our dog's health because we're we buying tried. too many umbrellas. I tried. I was like, and how many umbrellas does that equal when they gave us the check? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Could I get an itemized bill in umbrellas, please? Thank you. Then they find out that for the main challenge, they have to make a commercial and they get to choose one of five businesses. They're in teams. Now you, actor, you've done a few commercials. I've done my fair share. <laughs> oh God. What was your favorite commercial? We'll start with the positives. I did a commercial for a small town bank once. And the premise was I was part of a young newlywed couple who had just gotten in over their heads with, with newlywed babies. Newlywed couple? Who? Yeah. Who was it? Oh, it Who'd... was totally fake, and I'm not at all a method actor. Where is she? But the idea was that I had a baby strapped to my chest, and they As said, you know, we were expecting a baby, but not triplets. Their poop. Oh. And I turn around, and there were two more babies strapped to my back. I don't know why they felt they needed to hire actual live infants for this, because everything else was pretty low budge. What would the other option be? You turn around there's just Cabbage Patch Kids? If it was good enough for Bradley Cooper. I shouldn't have been a contender. What was the movie? It was I Shouldn't Have Been a Contender. Oh, it was the baby. war. It was war. It was American Soldier. Shooting babies. Sniper. It was <laughs> they baby say sniper. We're the problem. That was fun until I realized how much babies weigh. And they had to keep switching out the babies because they would start crying and drooling. So they had actually six babies on set. And it became this like horrible circus of like throwing babies all over me. And it was really traumatic. We did consider having kids. That has been a conversation in our past. And then after that commercial, we were like, but maybe where not. would we get a loan? Oh, yeah. And then we do, if you do have a baby, you do have to do the whole script of the commercial. We just yeah. couldn't commit to that. My favorite commercial you've ever done, I don't know that I've ever told you this. My favorite commercial you've ever done is the lighting one. There's one where he and, again, his wife, so I guess you're part of the problem, just trying to stamp out gay marriage. Yeah. It's him and his wife and like a baby, right? You're getting out of your car and you no. have a stroller. No baby. I. Oh, I, uh, you're getting out of the car. You have a luggage. Luggage. We just returned from a very Maui stressful experience, apparently, judging by the looks on our face. And they come home to their very expensive house and it lights up. And my favorite thing is they walk in their house after their vacation or whatever. They just turn the lights on and then you and your wife just go. What? The like you, tagline for the company like was, let our lights be the vacation from your vacation. No, shut up. You made that up. I did. Can you imagine? Why did you look at each other like that? Because the conceit was so we'd thrilled? been on this horrible trip. We'd been on seven different planes and layovers and delayed flights. And we get home and it's snowing. We shot in the snow. It was horrible. And after we've been road weary for so many hours, we get home, we flip the switch and our beautiful lighting lights up our home and we're home at last. God, what a relief. And you too can have that relief if you buy our lights. But that's the thing. If you're tired, if you really have been like traveling in the snow and you're so tired, in what world do you have time to smirk? And, and on top of that, connect with my husband? Ew, uh, we, we just, just spent so time much together. time together. Get away from and me. now we need to make an emotional connection, a smirk. Now we're locked. Another dog is in trouble. I'm not gonna turn to him and be like, hey, let's emotionally connect over our lights. We've just been all over the world and now we gotta be locked back in our little dungeon but together. I do love it, it is funny. So they have to make these commercials. I love it. I would love to write a commercial skit for Drag Race. I think that would be so fun. You should. Right? Well, no, I mean, and do what? But I just mean like if you were on the show, <laughs> there are certain challenges I'd wanna do, certain challenges I wouldn't. Yeah. That's funny, it's fun. You get to be funny. Sell something right now. Okay, I'm in love with my husband. No, I really am. Do you buy it? Like that. Oh, I thought we were gonna do the smirk. Oh, well, you didn't say it was after a long road trip. Let's go to the runway and then we'll watch their things. The runway prompt is Night of a Thousand... Maria Felixes. Yes, and we, again, Felix? we apologize for our American accents, but unfortunately that is where we were born and raised. That's what we're stuck with. Sorry about that. And there's no way to expand our horizons or anything. We Have know. you ever been to Barcelona? Once. Thi, 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 thi. So that's all I need, right? I'm like a world traveler now. Mm, thi, thi, thi. Let's start with the hosts, obviously. So first up, we have Valentina. Now, do you remember Valentina? Did you watch that season with me? 
I'm sure I did. Great. Oh my God, she's so fucking gorgeous. Yeah. Do you like this? I do. It's shiny, it's chic, it's business with a sense of party. Thank and you. a little Carmen San Diego. Yeah, a hat. Then we have co-host Lolita Banana. Now she is French, or not French, she's not, she's Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> We but know she, nothing. <laughs> but she's lived in France. That's how we met her was Drag Race France. So of course she chose the period of time where Maria Felix was in France. She did live in Paris for a while. It's sort of a Maria Felix meets Marie Antoinette. There you go. Let's just say that. There you go. I love it. I think this is so fucking cool. Love it. The hair is coiffed for days. There we go. What kind of, what, what drag are you visually drawn to? My own. Oh, God. I'm, no, but I've always been curious. Could you have opinions? I like avant-garde freak drag. I like the okay. weird, freak. like... Yeah. So we're stinky sluts stinky. and we're freaks. I like Jesus stinky Christ. slut freak drag. Oh. Um, yes, I like the sort of alien art kid drag. Yeah. Oh, and also the guest judge, she was described as the Mexican Britney Spears. What was her name? I'm gonna Google Mexican Britney Spears. Nope, that is just a picture of Britney Spears in, in Mexico. Okay, not great. Dana Paula. Dana Paula. Dana Again, Paula. American accents, but she is so fucking gorgeous. I couldn't, I couldn't. It was too much, I had to look away. And I loved, she truly seemed thrilled to be there and yeah. was such a positive uh, effervescent. You know how sometimes like guest judges can be a little dead behind the eyes or they can be Joel McHale. This was not Joel McHale. This was, she was totally tuned in and I loved it. That's when you know they're a real fan of the show they're on. But it makes a difference, don't you think? Yeah, I think it's coming through me right now, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you seem thrilled. Up first, we had Pixie Pixie. Now, one of my favorite things is when they do the Night of a Thousands is when they do the edit where there's the picture of the person right next to them because yes. you get to see the inspiration brought to life. And I did really appreciate that. And I love that they start black and white and then go into color. Until... It's giving Wizard of Oz. <laughs> And I'm really glad it really worked out that we ate that peyote button before watching the episode and, and I threw on Dark Side of the Moon. Technically, Wizard of Oz was sepia tone into Technicolor. Well, if we're getting technical, it wasn't a peyote button. It was just a JB's CBD mess. gummy. Yeah, there we go. CBD gummy? That gets y'all fucked up? Hell yeah, baby. My anxiety is low and my muscles are relaxed. I liked the photo of Maria more than I liked what Pixie actually did with it. Now Pixie, she started her own drag family called the House of Black and White. And so she's always kind of in some sort of black and white mode. Like the judges said, if you're black and white, if that's your whole kind of thing, then really bring it to life, over-exaggerate, yeah. show us We have to see the contrast. Something. Yeah, and really she just kind of painted her face black and white and that was really all there was. Now I did see in the comments and I really appreciate that because you asked, she has like a chin strap of black and you asked what that was about and it was only because I saw it in the comments that apparently she does it to make her face look smaller. It but works. I just think, yeah, if you do that. Oh, that's a small face. Oh good. Yeah, it wasn't my favorite look. It wasn't my favorite. I love Pixie Pixie, but this- Good to start though. We can only go up from here. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. Thank you, Pixie. Up next, we have last week's winner, Argenis. Argenis, apologies. Now she almost exactly matched the picture. I very much appreciate that. That's a lot of hard work because there's jewels, there's tassels, there's all this stuff. It's strange with these kind of challenges because, listen, I can flip on a dime. Okay, I know I don't do that in our relationship. I know I'm very steady. No. But sometimes I really want exactly what I see in the picture and then I'm like, give me something different. This is exact and I loved it. Yeah, I made the comment that it felt a little costume for me and I think it was because it was the exact it's recreation. A exactly, and again, as we've stated, I like that freaky deaky avant-garde drag. I wanted her like bald-headed with like diamonds vomiting out of her mouth or something, just really missing the mark on the actual assignment, just gobsmacking me. We do have someone missing the mark later, so I can't wait. Up next, we have oh, fan favorite, Margaret Ia. Now, Margaret Iya, she dressed as Maria at the races, and I loved it. I agree with Lolita, it's so simple, but it's so well done. Like they say on what not to wear, may they rest, they're alive, I don't know why I said that. Tailoring, tailoring is so important. And I but like she how it was tailored to her body. Tailored it and brought it in 
the hat specifically so much that it's sort of giving beekeeper for me. Oh, yeah, I guess. Oh, I see that. So I couldn't help but think that, which is very cunt honey baby, of course. But thank you for trying to, to incorporate that. It's all about branding. The thing that I had an issue with with the judges talking about this look was Lolita saying that Margaret's signature face is scary. And we're on episode three. When is she going to show us something different? Listen, I... She, and they say this, she's one of the most famous drag queens in all of Mexico, in the entire fucking country, and her mug is iconic. I just, I have an issue with, first of all, labeling it scary. Uh, and they were being funny, I know. Yeah. But it's like calling all drag queens stinky. Stinky sluts, like that. exactly. And then, luckily, when they see the commercial, her makeup is slightly different, and they, like, jizz, they're so excited. And that's coming and I've never heard of that. I didn't love that, but I, I liked this a lot. Yeah, I just couldn't get away from the beekeeper aspect of it. Yeah. Oh, and I wanted to revise I what I said earlier. She put the honey in Cunt Honey Baby. Okay, thank you. Up next, we have Regina Voce. Now, she also did, I guess Maria loved being at the races. Looks like she's interviewing people, right? Is that, or no, wait. No, those are binoculars. Never mind, she's looking at people. I simply adored it. When it can't when it switched to color, get the fuck out of my Red. house. It's gorgeous. First of all, I love her face. Look at her face. Although when it switched to color, I suddenly couldn't help but think Michael Jackson. Oh, the babe. Hat, the red. Don't the do face. that to her. Well, and I am able to separate the drag queen from the inspiration of the look, which I'm sure she was thinking. I'm gonna mix Just Michael a reminder, Jackson, I, like, I love to bring this up whenever we can. There's more music in the world. Listen to something else. Yeah. I absolutely adored it, and we got the signature crocodile alligator. So fun. Necklace. Can I ask you, what's the difference between crocodile and alligator? Crocodile swamp? Crocodile alligator? It's about alligator whether you see one in a while or you see it later. Oh my god. Uh, isn't crocodile south of the equator and alligator is north? Isn't it something like that? Yeah, it's gotta be. No, but I think that is. I think oh, it's it like- it has to be. Babe. I think it's like location though. I really do. Yeah. Right? I don't know. But they are actually different. It's not no. just about where they're No, located. no, no, I know. But I, I thought, uh, leave it in the comments. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I also really enjoyed her take on the large, you know, the, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The large drag belt that's oh, just like, yes. and it's, and everyone has one and, uh, but she did it in gold and it wasn't like stretchy and it looked kind of like stomach muscles. I loved it. I just love her style, her interpretation. What did you think? You like me? I thought it was great. Okay, okay. Then we had Christian. Parata. Now, she pulled, okay, something you don't know. The girl who got eliminated last week, her signature thing is she paints herself fully pink. Great. So then they get rid of her, <laughs> and then Christian walks out fully pink. I What a beautiful touching homage <laughs> right? to a fallen sister. I adored this. I thought this was great. I really, really loved it. It's a very clear, she is fitting the source image, but then adding the all pink thing yeah. for whatever reason. Again, the alligator necklace. I am really bummed. I did order the alligator necklace and had it overnighted, and I thought it'd be delivered and it's not here. Let it would have been cool to have like alligator tooth necklaces like you get when you're on a vacation Alvin's somewhere. Alvin's Island. Alvin's Island. Oh my God. For Floridians. Listen, have you do made. a lot wrong. Ugh. But Alvin's Island. They don't know how lucky they are down you there. You get to walk through the mouth of a crocodile or alligator, depending on where the island is located, to get into the souvenir shop. It's the best. Anyway, I loved it. This was a top look for me. Absolutely adored. Then we have Serena Morena. Again, Maria's at the races. And she's wearing basically a lesser version of exactly what Valentina is wearing, which was an iconic moment of the episode when Valentina was like, now that I see yours, I am definitely going to keep mine. Ugh. You're such a bitch. I love her. It's just a bummer for her that Valentina did it too and yeah. did it so much better. I'm surprised they didn't check in the night before, like, hey girl, what you wearing? <laughs> yeah, that like Valentina didn't text all the contestants. Just want to make sure we're not wearing the same thing. I would. Then we had Lady Carol. Oh 
my god, it's perfect. It's the exact dress. She looks outrageously gorgeous. Mm -hmm. It's such a good recreation, isn't it? It's great. And she's doing her signature paint on this, the exact same paint she's been doing, but I don't hear any notes about that. I don't hear any notes about show us something different with her paint. Why are you picking on Magos over there? Yeah. Sorry. I don't like that. I think it's because I have only one paint and I'm nervous. I don't want someone to say that to me. Well, don't tell them that. I know. I'll she has a million in her back pocket. Just uh, wait. Yeah. Just wait Join until. Join Patreon and you'll yeah. see none of them. Then we have Galavaro. Now this look was really fucking cool. Of course. Super fucking cool. Sort of belly dancer, sort of and the crystal. chandelier tiara. I don't know. I didn't think it, I gotta be honest, I didn't think it was that flattering though. I don't know. Maybe because the corset was see-through, they couldn't really make it a functional corset. It doesn't really look like it's pulling her in at all. I don't think she needs to be pulled in. Okay. Girl, go ahead. I love your stinky there. body just the way it is. Stinky. You're creating, listen, you're creating this narrative for yourself that I think you're gonna regret. IMH I'm needs a villain. I'm gonna bring this up. And, babe, I've got that on lock. Up next, we have Vermelia Noir. I love that she picked the kind of My Fair Lady type look, mm -hmm. right? You love volume, you love freak, right? You call us freaks. So that's really cool. The issue, which I completely agreed with Valentina, was this was her time in Paris. This was the time of couture corseted looks. And this dress looks a little bulky on her. She didn't really like fit it to herself. And much like the now deceased hosts of What Not To Wear, it's the canon I've created. Say, tailoring is important. It just looked like it wasn't tailored to her at all. And then she tried to do her signature kind of paint. And did they say it kind of gave geisha, honestly? They did. Gay geisha. Gay geisha. It's just not... They made that pun, and everybody loved that pun, but nobody likes any of my puns. Well, theirs is in Spanish, and it's just... Oh, it's a language It's a barrier. language thing. Yeah. yeah, if you spoke a different language, I bet you'd be hilarious. And so this is her time in Paris, but maybe this is more like she's doing the time at the end of her time in Paris, which if you'd eaten all that food in Paris, you'd have to let your dress out a little bit, I think. So maybe it was a purposeful thing. You'd have to let your... Oh, my God. Up next, Matraca. I adore her. I just want to say uh -oh. I adore her. But... This is the most whatever happened to Baby Jane shit <laughs> I've ever seen. She walked out and I was like, great, she's doing Betty Davis. You're supposed to say, oh, that's what happened to Baby Jane. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, take it back. Mm -mm. Hola, bienvenidos a IMHO. She did a kind of mesh corset on the outside of the dress, which I actually liked. I could see that it was kind of giving her more of a shape, which I, I did appreciate, but then it kind of became the only part I liked? I don't know. I just think this I don't is know. so weird. I liked that other corset that was just very simple, kind of diamond cage, kind of belly dancer hanging thing. So No, I know, but it just, that corset to me didn't look like it was corseting. This was a bummer. This was a bummer. It was Baby Jane and Mary Poppins, and it wasn't Poppins. Yeah, I gotta be honest. Both marks. So now we're gonna watch the commercials. The first team to go is Christian Parata and Argenis. Argenis. I'm gonna get there. Eventually. Their commercial was for airports. And one thing I just gotta say, generally speaking, all of the commercials were porn, right? Oh, for sure. They were all just horny, 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 horny. I think uh, we as queer people, we get to choose our family and our families don't have to be horny. It is such an easy track to pick. And if comedy is not your thing, it's kind of the, for drag queens, it's kind of the immediate go-to is horny. That's just, and it works. I mean, there's a reason for it. You know, we all think cum is hilarious. Yeah. Poo poo pee pee. Poo poo pee pee, which it's all hilarious. hopefully is not a huge part of your sex life. Or it can be, it can be. No kink shaming. Poo poo pee pee leads to hoo hoo hee hees. So sometimes that's bathroom humor. Yeah. But I, I don't know. What did you think overall? Of I operate on a low hanging fruit I comedy know, I know. belief from my puns, although some say that puns are the droppings of soaring wits. But who says that? 
people who like puns. Okay. I agree. I think that it was heavy handed. <laughs> I think <Thorn>. that. <laughs> There's like, I, literally, I was trying to pull a clip to show, but I was like, we're going to get demonetized if I show any of this. That being said, I did think that Christiane, who played the flight attendant, I thought she was great. And I loved that when they were filming, she was being kind of bossy. I was like, yeah, I am each up. Up next, we had Rahina and Vermelia. Now they had to sell tacos. They're doing a taco stand. And somehow it was just them with like dildos. Dildos full of sauce? Yeah, which is, I gotta be honest, I like my dildos. Well, I was gonna say I like them dry. That is, no. But I like to add it myself. Well, I don't wanna surprise myself by picking up a dildo and then what boom. What sauce are you? You know what Slathering I'm all over a dildo. If you don't know, no one else does. I felt for Vermelia. She's been in the bottom all episodes of this series, and she can feel the pressure. And unfortunately, it seems like she just kind of failed. Yeah. Major missed opportunity with slippery wet dildo. They could have done like a oh, like a cartoon bar of soap thing where it's like whip, 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 whip. not my favorite, but again, the sex humor, the cheap stuff, it works. You know, there was no shortage of laughter in that room. Then we had Serena and Lady Quero, and they were doing mechanics. My favorite thing about this commercial is that at no point do you ever see a car. The commercial starts with them being driven around by the pit crew members. So it's them in traffic, but they're not in cars. Hmm. They're actually, it looks like they're running. Or strutting. I think you said like, wait, are they just running through traffic? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I guess they forgot to put the car in in post. And then when they actually get to the mechanic shop, one of the pit crew members is lying on his back as if he were under a car with a wrench and he's just using it on his finger. He's just laying there going, Surely they thought something was going to be added in post. I, I do want to shout out the pit crew here, which Should should we be calling me? them the avocado pit crew for this? Why? Because avocados have pits. Oh, yeah, I guess they do. So the avocado pit crew, okay. they were acting their little tiny lubed up butts off. In this. Lubed up butts. Don't they put grease all over themselves, or are they just naturally that? They don't put it on their butts. I gotta lubed think it, up butts. I think it probably seeps. I think you were watching too many of these commercials. They got me horny. But, but so I wanted to give a shout up out. Lubed up butt. Go ahead. Well, I wanted to give them a shout out because they're doing a lot of great acting, and from my perspective as a great actor, <laughs> I was seeing some really quality stuff happening. There's a shot of one of the pit crew, the, the avocado pit crew members, going like this. Oh, I know. And I that, thought, <coughs> that's what, later. what if this guy is a method actor and in between takes backstage, he's running around like, oh God, oh God. And he goes up to like the craft services table. Oh God, which sun chips should I get? Hey. Oh God. Adios mio. ADM, ADM. They were fine. Lady Quero I thought was really funny. I do very much enjoy her. I, it may have been the boobs. Then we had Gala and Magos. Now, when they were doing their commercial and they were filming it, Valentina and Lolita were like, I don't know what the fuck this is. But sometimes that is good. Sometimes that means that like, it's gonna be a great final product and blah, blah, blah. Right. No, no, they were doing a nail salon and it, it just didn't make a lot of sense. I couldn't follow the story. I, I didn't understand it. It was too complex of a story for a nail salon commercial. <laughs> yeah, listen, you just talk edit. about your nails. They lost the plot a little, which sucks because I did kind of want them to prove. Do you see that? Mm. Wait, where's the thing? It's the thing. There it is. Quick game of badminton. Do you see it? No. I just think that we're being a little overly cuticle, overly critical. Whatever, it's a nail salon. And then our final team, Matraka and Pixie Pixie, who I adore, so I had such high hopes, unfortunately. Oh no, wait, fortunately. <gasps> Twist. They're doing Funeral Home, which is absolutely the one I would have chosen because death isn't, in, it's intriguing. Okay, we're all, what is it? Where do we go? I thought Matraka killed it. Do you remember the line she said? That's a good pun. Thank you. She was in the coffin and then she's like, yeah, I'm dying over these deals. What the fuck did she say? She said, well, she said, oh God, the stiffness of my friend. Anyway, fill in the blank. It was hilarious. I loved it. The reason I loved this one so much is it was a script. They had jokes. They had fully fleshed out 
jokes. It was just the two of them and the pit crew in front of a coffin the whole time. There wasn't a scene change, there wasn't any, it was just them telling their jokes. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I thought it was really good. Unfortunately, because their looks on the runway were so shitty, I think one of them would have won. I think Matraka probably would have won had her look not looked like Baby Jane fucked Mary Poppins to death. We get a winner. The winner is Rahina Voce. Congratulations. Truly, I would have been happy with her or Christian because Chris, Chris, we need Alexis. I can't believe I'm saying this, but yeah. she's gotten compliments from Spanish speakers. Her Spanish is good. Does she sounds, yeah. she doesn't sound American. I could. Well, you there it is. And then we get a bottom to Vermelia, who has been in the bottom this entire time. <laughs> Last week, she was saved from being in the bottom two, but she's been in the bottom the whole time. And then Serena, who was in the bottom last week. So now we haven't had good lip syncs on this show. No, it's of just. Not. Well, you don't know, I'm telling you. We do get a lip sync in front of the actual artist, which I think is so threatening. I would be so threatened. Well, she's singing along, so basically showing them up with her own lip sync. Yeah, and she did have her own microphone. Can you imagine? She was like, can I get a mic for this? Yeah, she starts shablamming all over the place. Yeah. Anyway, so they do a lip sync. It's fine. Serena does a, a reveal, and the, what did you say? Oh, the socks were long this whole time. <laughs> yeah, she revealed into a bodysuit, and then she rolled her socks up, and listen, the judges loved it, so I don't know. And then, bless her heart, Vermelia was like, well, I don't have long socks, but I do have confetti in my titties. And so she, she made her tits explode, and we went up for it, okay? Just like the confetti. But ultimately, it wasn't enough to save her, and we do have to finally say goodbye to Vermalia. What if she had to pick up all the confetti on her <laughs> Before you leave, would you mind grabbing all of this confetti, please? Yeah, listen, if we're on episode three, and you're in the bottom again, it, you've been in the bottom for every single episode, maybe you're not ready for this show. Take and that's okay, and that's okay. I kind of have a similar feeling to Serena. You've been in the bottom two, two weeks in a row, and we're on episode three. She's on her way out. I think she's gotta be on her way out, right? I think she's got a beautiful face, but we'll see. I don't know, I could be completely wrong. I've what never been wrong be. in our relationship, but there's a first for everything. So we'll see. Goodbye, Vermalia. I've enjoyed You gotta say something. Romelia sounds like Bahalia. That reminds me of Bahalia Tire Fire and Battery. Get, get your, your rolling rollin down the line. line. Now that's a good commercial. And they yes. had cars in it. They had actual Let's cars. They weren't just going like this. Them on Drag Race. Whoever wrote that commercial, <laughs> yeah. we got a career for you. If there's a songwriter in Bahalia, Mississippi looking for a new job, Drag Race is for you. Okay, so that Should was the episode. Should we do that better and more in sync? Singing the song together? What? Should we sing the song together actually in sync? Would that be funny? You're right, I'm sorry. Let's start over. Hola, bienvenidos a Aime Cho. That was the episode. Now, babe, that was your first Drag Race in Mexico episode. Yes. Give me your honest reaction. You know, it took me back to my time in Mexico. Oh my God. I could feel the hot Yucatan sun. I God, could... It would be so fucking funny though if while we were watching it, we just saw your dad wandering through the workroom. Oh, this is neat. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. Does anybody have a Dos If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you hit that subscribe button and of course the notification bell. We're also over on Patreon where each episode we start with sometimes a few minutes, sometimes a 20 minute bonus footage of every episode. So make sure you head over to Patreon and you don't miss all of that. We're also on Cameo. I'm about to film about 20 of them. Ah! So hit us up over there. We also have Shamios, which is like a cameo, but it's an actual full episode and we just get the middleman. And Alexis and I talk about your life and the mistakes you've made. We actually did just have a Shamio where I described in detail how I was going to physically fight somebody in a Ralph's grocery store. Actually, that video is available on Patreon. It was so unhinged, <laughs> I put it over there. I did. Also, our merch is at dragqueenmerch.com and we have new merch that is Kurt Honey Baby. Yeah. What's well, CHB? You yeah. could, in fact. Have you bought one yet? Have you bought anything? I was kind of waiting for my complimentary one. I know. Since I he inspired it. When I showed him, he was like, I want a hat in white. And I was like, cool, order it. I don't have it. I don't get a special deal. All right. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye bye. Adios. Fuck. 
I put on Patreon that I'd be filming with Curtis and I asked our patrons if they had any questions for him. I think a couple Did people- Did anyone respond? I think a couple people responded. Was it like, why are you doing this? Where is Alexis? What have you done There were her? a few like, where is Alexis? And I was like, I'm sorry to tell you this, but she quit. I'm kidding, she'll be back. Wait, I should sound happy about that. She'll be back. <laughs> Acting challenge. Okay, Krusty Bobusty wants to know, are you gay? Hey Krusty, I'm not gay, but my husband is. And Jordan asked a follow-up question, why are you gay? Well, I guess you said you're not. I'm gay because of the devil. All right, Burwald wanted you to know that you're not alone and not knowing how to order at Taco Bell. Thank you, Burwald. Let's get together sometime and go eat somewhere other than Taco Bell. We did actually have dinner with Burwald. Alexis and I did when he was in town with his husband. He's so nice. What a nice guy. Bunbury would like to know, what is your Taco Bell order? I got an array of things that all tasted the same. So I don't really remember. It is true, yeah, it's true. Michael wants to know, how do you feel being a fan favorite of the IMHOCU, which is the IMHO Cinematic Universe? I'm a fan favorite? Well, I think we only have you and JB, so yeah. You, you never, you never told me that before. I didn't even think the people knew I existed. Thank you. I really feel seen and and appreciated and and loved. Is the word loved? I've only ever I seen it written. That word. Listen, I get it. It's hard being married to me. Zane asked, "What that mouth do?" Don't answer it. Zane's a troublemaker. Zane, I see you. It do this. Stop. Uh, stop. Stop! Vincent asked, I want to know the full story of how Curtis and Darby met. What's Curtis's dream role? Does he actively watch Drag Race and IMHO? No. Yeah, let's just start with the first one. I want to know, how did we meet? What story do you tell people? That we met through the Chicago Gay Men's Chorus. Mm -hmm. um, we talked the night away. Were you in it? the first, um, I was like adjacent, I would like to say. You were in it for a few weeks, right? Yeah, of course. How long were you in it? Long enough for them to kick me out. Curtis. I don't know, probably a month. Why did you join it? Just to keep my uh, singing voice active, <laughs> to really, it's, you know, it's a muscle. If you, don't, if you don't exercise it, you lose it. And it worked. Yeah. You wanna sing? <clears throat> Do you remember the very first time? Go ahead. You saw funny girl. Oh, wow. And what is your dream role? My dream role, I love a Parker House role. But a Kaiser roll is great, um, especially like a poppy seed. Um, cinnamon roll. How did I forget cinnamon See, roll? See, here's the thing. Here's I, w I wanna make this clear, okay? And sorry even put, I think sorry asked the question. Oh, and then put no puns, please. No, she wrote, how do you cope? And then in parentheses, living with Darby. Listen, Sense of humor. You think it's hard to live with me. He's like this a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot to take in. You think, well, someone who makes puns and like silly dad jokes all the time, that's gotta be so fun. You gotta be constantly yeah. laughing. It's exhausting. It's like going on a long road trip through the snow, coming home, trying to turn on your lights. The lights won't turn on. Who are you gonna smirk to? Oh, I love this one. But 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 boys don't cry asked, what is the worst piece of acting you've ever seen or witnessed? Name names. So a little thing about me, I love watching bad acting. I like watching people's audition tapes. I like going to really bad plays. We all like to see bad things to make us all feel better. I love bad exactly. Kind of, well, it also just puts friend. everything in perspective. Um, <laughs> <laughs> such a nice way to put such a shitty thing. That's true though, it's true, it's true. It does. I know exactly what it is because the only thing that's coming to mind is one of my favorite gifts from the Italian Spider-Man the guy who opens the door, sees whatever he sees, and goes, oh. Italian Spider-Man? What are you talking about? What's Italian Spider-Man? It's some movie called The Italian Spider-Man. What? Whenever you look up on the GIF app thing, you look up Italian Spider-Man, and this GIF so comes up. The worst piece of acting you've ever seen is a GIF. Yeah. I'm Gen Z. No, you're not. A tall gay elf asks, what are your favorite celebrity sightings since you moved to LA? My favorite celebrity sighting would probably be when we almost ran over Mark Hamill. <laughs> we did. He was- This week. He was walking out into the street. He was jaywalking, which is legal in California now. Yeah. 
It is. So. He was also, what you know what I thought was really funny is that he was wearing, you remember those radio headphones, those giant headphones that were a radio that has like an antenna? Mm-hmm. That's what he was wearing. I love that. He's probably had that for what, 40 years? That's how he communicates with the Death Star or whatever, I don't know. Have you seen Star, Star Wars? Wars? Yeah, of course. Oh, I've never I've seen, seen the first three, once each, I believe. But the, the first only three, like the first that were were oh the five yeah the five six seven five six or seven four, oh but five, then I did six, see uh, the Anakin Skywalker one in theaters when it came out why because it was the thing to do when I was oh. like nine or whenever that came out when um, you were nine but I'm the sure. reason the reason that I love the Mark Hamill sighting was because he was walking out into the middle street and I got to say more like Luke J Walker am I right. He played Luke Skywalker. Oh, got it. Okay, well, Curtis, thank you so much for being with us today. If you want to hear um, more I questions hope... and more answers, join Patreon. Oh, yeah, actually, we do have another, I'm not kidding, we have another 40 questions. We're not going to answer all of them, but we will put up a little Patreon-only questions, and we'll answer a few more. I like to think so it's because I'm rest. so elusive and evasive that people have just so many questions because... I think it's just because I don't talk about you. You don't? Babe, I've got so much on my plate. Okay, bye.